Okay, here we go. Okay, shit, did I take the trash out? When was the last time I went to the dentist? Did you know that California is in a serious drought? Like seriously, just stop having children now. I can't stand the thought of our children growing up in a world with no clean water. I can't stand the thought of anything bad happening to kids. And then there's Oprah. <sighs> Oprah. <laughs> it was the early 90s. She was just another talk show host. I don't remember her guests that day or the, talk, or the topic. I just remember how she very tactically mentioned her childhood about being sexually violated. She said it so casually. Not so confidently, as nonchalantly, like it was okay. Not that it was okay, but that she was okay. I remember thinking, shit, I had a similar experience. They were, they were weird. I kept that weird shit to myself. My mom married Art when I was about five. He was a devout Christian, like my mom. I guess like we were, but what did I know? That first year, I don't remember anything terrible. Everyone was happy. We had a big house and a nice neighborhood. Then I guess God called Art to the ministry. <laughs> we moved so we could attend Bible college, cramming ourselves into a small three-bedroom house with awful bright red shag carpet. I don't remember when things shifted, but that house became a tight little container. Art was angry a lot, but he never hit anyone. Yeah, there was that time he held my brother up against the wall, but he didn't strangle him. He wasn't violent, just so fucking angry. The first time anything weird happened, I was in second grade. It was Sunday. My room was messy, and I couldn't find just one of my dress shoes for Sunday school. So Art instructed me to stay home from Sunday school and clean to find that one missing shoe. After they left, I knew I should probably go clean my room, but I just relaxed. I can still feel that same moment of peace. I can still find myself inside the mind of my eight-year-old self at that precise moment. It was nice to have a normally crowded home be so peaceful. That morning went by fast. The car pulled up and I knew I was in trouble. Art took me into the back room and closed the door. I still had my church clothes on, white stockings. He told me how to spank me for not doing what I was supposed to do. And I remember saying something about, it hurts the parents more than it hurts the child. I was scared. I remember the feel of the carpet under my stockings. I remember the lighting of the room, the curtains. I wish I could forget this one moment. This one moment, 30 years later, is all too clear. He made me lay over his lap, and he spanked me. Then that weird thing happened. It didn't make sense to me. I was confused. His hand was where I peed. I don't think he ever said anything like, don't tell anyone. I just knew not to. I don't remember the rest of that day. I can't remember if I ever found that one shoe, but I sure as hell remember what it looked like. A simple black dress shoe made of shiny patent leather with a tiny black heel. I wonder if I'd be a different person if I'd never lost that shoe. If I were a cleaner child, if I hadn't kept such a dirty room. Have you ever seen Oprah's closets? <laughs> they aren't just walk-in closets, they are gigantic rooms with individual shares, shelves for each pair of shoe. But she never loses shoes. The years went by and there were times when weird things would happen and they always happened when I was doing what I was not supposed to be doing. It was a punishment. I guess when it happened, I felt like I had it coming. But summer vacation, 
my sibling and I, we'd go visit our dad on the West Coast. It was such a relief to be at my dad's house. It wasn't the beaches, the camping, or sunshine so much as just being in a space free of anxiety and fear. I liked his pull-out couch, the smell of his garage, the shampoo he kept in his shower, <laughs> style shampoo. But then we'd have to go back, back where we belonged, back where I was supposed to be. This was our life. One very dark and conservative household and a vacation from it each year to show us that not everyone lived like we did. Then my brother made his great escape. He became such a pain in the ass that Art sent him to live with my dad in California. <laughs> the promised land. It sucked after my brother left. Those were darker days. But eventually survival kicked in. Just before my ninth grade year, I started sneaking out at night, sometimes just to troll around the neighborhood. I remember feeling scared outside sometimes, but it's hard to say what was scarier. Following my brother's formula, I was sent to live with my dad at 15. When I was dropped off at the airport, Art said, here's your chance to start over again. Don't screw it up. Fuck you. I changed my name, or at least the way it's pronounced. I decided that instead of Sherry, I was going to be Sheree. Sheree represented the person I wanted to be. Smart, confident, funny. She was awesome. Grand Canyon awesome. I've tried my best to become her. It had been close to 10 years since I'd left. 10 years of being Sheree when I received a phone call from my mom. She had some news to break. Art had a brain tumor. He was having an operation. There was a chance he might not survive this operation. I had fantasized about his death as much as I'd fantasize about growing bigger boobs. <laughs> I remember, as a child, setting the table for dinner while he stood at the stove cooking. I'd hold butter knives in my hand and seriously consider stabbing him in the back. I wasn't allowed to watch horror movies, conservative Christian household and all, so I had no idea how to effectively kill anyone. <laughs> my life was so removed from that part of my past, and yet I would have crawled on my knees 3,000 miles just to spit on his grave. I flew instead. <laughs> the hospital waiting room was filled with people from the church praying for our survival. Hours later, the surgeon came out and announced that the tumor was bigger than they had anticipated. Oh, yes. But that they were able to get it all and he was stable and recovering. So that was it. He survived. I spent the next couple of days with my mom and little sister, shopping, eating, talking the way normal families would. It was nice. Until Art called from the hospital to tell my mom he needed his reading glasses. When we got to the hospital, she'd realized she'd forgotten them. We walked into his recovery room, and he was sitting in a chair beside the bed. I could see what looked like a trap door cut into his skull. As soon as she broke the news that there were no glasses, Art began to lay into her. He raised his voice and called her names. I felt so strange. I was a grown-up now, and I had forgotten. I'd forgotten this was how it was. I watched my mother's eyes unfocus and stare at some random place in the room. I'm sure she'd figured he'd stop as long as she didn't provoke him. But my sister, with her fierce temper, jumped in and started defending my mother. And then I witnessed something. As my sister was yelling at Art, feeling as though she was making headway, he turned his head toward me and his eyes squinted slightly, gleaming with hatred and evil. It was just a split second, but I caught it. This master of button pushing made one snide remark, a low blow to my sister. She immediately went ballistic and any ability to argue against art with rational thought was gone. While she screamed nonsense, he smiled. That fucker sat there and smiled. My body went into high alert. My heart raced. I felt the hairs on my arm go up, and I swear to fucking God, my skin was stinging. It hurt. My hand lifted up, and I pointed at Ert. At first, the words were quiet, 
a whisper. But then they found their way across the room to my target. You, 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 you! I got his attention. My sister stopped yelling. I walked over to my mother and sister and shoved them out, pushing that heavy hospital door shut behind them. I was alone with Art. I turned to face him. I thought of leaping over that bed and bashing in that stupid trap door. I felt so much rage. Rage I had bottled in and kept quiet for about too long. I know blood truly boils. I walked around the bed, my body tense. I stood in front of the monster. He lifted his head to look at me. He was a scared old man. He was afraid. He was afraid of me. Do you know how lucky you are? I said. I don't know how my mother manages to take care of you. I would have wished you dead. He began to weep. Something came over me that still puzzles me. My hurt, my fear, my anger, it just vanished. I felt peace. My body moved without me, and I knelt in front of him. I looked up at him. We looked at one another. Through tears, he said, I'm sorry, over and over. I don't know how many times. It didn't matter. The monster was weak and vulnerable, something I never thought I'd see. I stood up and looked down on him as he shifted himself into the proper man his church believed him to be. Thank you for coming out here to be with your mother. Have a nice trip. I paused before I said, you too. I knew it was the last time that I would ever see that man. I was done. I walked out of that room to my mother and sister, patiently waiting for me. We started down the hallway to leave. We fell back into our ritual of silence. As I walked away from that room, from that man, with my mother and sister on either side of me, my head up, I walked, not confidently, but nonchalantly, like it was okay. Not that it was okay, but that I was okay. I am okay. The silence, the silence was not okay. And tonight, tonight, the silence ends.